Good morning, families. Welcome to story time. So happy you chose to join me today. Today, we're going to be reading a book called The Boat, The Lion by Claire Turley Newberry. And in the background, you can hear my little lion running around the house, chasing each other. They're playing chase. This is their time to play. We're going to find out the adventures of this lion and a little girl named Claire in just a moment. But before we do that, I'd like to share with you some of my favorite things. Of course, we have our candle and it's been lit. And since it's foggy outside today, you can see it glowing a little bit. And of course, I have my tea. Can you see the steam? And I have some nice smelling things to keep me calm. But also, I have things. Now, this is the things that I found. And it's so special to me. But what I have inside are some of my most favorite things. Anybody who knows me knows that I love feathers. And when I go for my walks to take my photos, every day a feather is put in my path. And I collect those feathers and then I put them in arrangements around my house. I wanted to share with you one particular feather. This one right here is found in the park just across the street from my house. And it is an owl feather and it's so soft and I think I have more than one but this feather is so soft and I love it so very much so I put it in a space that I know it's going to be safe there's many many different kinds of feathers turkey feathers duck feathers what do you like to collect what do you like to find on your travels? Tell me about it one day. Okay, well, we're going to start our book. Pumpkin is wanting to go outside. Maybe he'll listen to my story. Herbert the Lion. I'm going to show you the front page because here's Herbert. And there is someone running and dropping all the groceries. <coughs> Herbert the lion. And look, he's so tiny. Smallest, bigger, There was once a little girl named Sally who wanted a baby lion. She already had a doll's house, two dolls, a tea set, and a toy sleeper on wheels, but she didn't like any of them. All she wanted was a lion, a real live lion. So one day, her mother brought her one from downtown. Then Sally was very happy. She named the little cub Herbert, and they played together all day long. Her mom was able to just buy a little lion downtown. What if we could buy a lion in downtown Asia? That would be silly. Herbert had a hot cooked cereal for breakfast. For lunch, he had spinach and a poached egg. For supper, he had baked potato and applesauce and a round cookie with raisins in it. Of course, he had sun baths at the seaside. Look how cute he is. He's laying in the sand. 
while she's building the same castle for me. And the way he took his cod liver oil was simply beautiful. Herbert grew and grew and grew. People used to take cod liver oil and, and maybe they still do to help keep them healthy. So it's like vitamin. He was such a friendly lion. When Sally's grandmother came to the house, he always put his paws on her shoulders and licked her face with his big pink tongue. Sally's grandmother did not really like this, but Herbert did it just the same. He was so friendly. or the grocer or the butcher's boy came to the door, Herbert always ran to meet him. Uh-oh, that's the photo. Does the grocer boy think that the lion is just being friendly? What would you do if you saw a lion that you did not know running towards you? You might do the same thing. Sally told people over and over that Herbert was just friendly, but they did not believe her. They were sure that he wanted to fight them. Pretty soon, the postman stopped bringing the letters to Sally's house. He was so afraid of poor Herbert. And the butcher's boy stopped bringing the meat, and the milkman stopped bringing the milk, and the grocer stopped bringing the groceries, and all of Sally's friends stopped coming to see her, and her grandmother, and her grandfather, and all her aunts and uncles, and cousins, Stopped coming. And at last, Sally's father said Herbert would have to go and live at the zoo in a cage with bars so that he could not frighten people anymore. Sally cried and cried, and Herbert cried too. And then Sally's mother had a wonderful idea. Why not send Herbert to our ranch in the mountains, she said. Then we could live outdoors, or so, sorry, then he could live outdoors and have plenty of room. So Sally's parents sent Herbert to the mountains. And to keep her from being too lonely without him, they gave her a very small kitten. You can see my kitten now. Look at him. But on the ranch, Herbert was sad, for he had no one to play with. One day, he decided to go back to town and see Sally. All day, he ran and ran. hungry, he stopped at places and ate candy and pie and ice cream cones. He hadn't any money with him, but that was all right, for no one thought of asking him to pay. Oh no, nobody knew. He's on the counter and he's in there and he's eating a pie. <laughs> at last he reached Sally's house. She was delighted to see him. That night, they had an extra special supper to celebrate with vanilla ice cream and lemon layer cake. I would love some lemon layer cake if I could. That sounds amazing. In the middle of the night, Herbert was very ill with a terrible pain in his stomach. Nobody knew about all the indigestible things that he had eaten on his way from the ranch. But even the doctor said, Herbert must have eaten something. It happens when you eat too many sweet things. Mm -hmm. When Herbert was well 
well enough to sit up and eat milk toast. Sally's parents had a serious talk about him. They talked and talked, and finally Sally's father said, Well, dear, it looks to me as if the only thing we could do is move out to the ranch and stay there. Then Sally and Herbert can play together all the time. And Sally's mother said, Darling, I'm afraid you're right. It's the only thing we can do. So they packed up everything and got in the car and went back to the ranch. And now Sally's mother and father often say they don't see how they ever stood to live in the city where there isn't any fresh air or scenery and the streetcars keep you awake at night. As for Sally and Herbert, they are very happy. They have each other to play with every day and a whole big ranch to play on. And what more could anyone wish? The end. enjoyed our story today. I sure did. Thank you for listening to my kittens as they were talking to us during this story time. I hope that today you get out and you run and run and run in your backyard or you have a special tea party with someone you really love just like Sally Triplett. I hope you all are doing well and I miss you so very